The Bloomington Fire and Police Departments have been struggling with staffing and wages for years. But they say things may change if their budget requests are approved this year. Isabella Vesperini has this report. The fire department has a popular training program, but has struggled to retain those firefighters who find jobs where they can make more money. We had fallen behind in salary competitiveness, and so we had uh, younger and middle-aged firefighters who were leaving to go to departments that were making sometimes $20,000, $25,000 more than they could make here uh, with just a short drive up the Interstate 69, so they were taking advantage of that. At the City of Bloomington's budget meetings last month, Kerr proposed a salary increase of $15,000 for the first year of work and a $5,000 increase for the second year. If approved, the wages would be comparable to Ellettsville and White River. But it's not all about money. Outdated facilities have also made firefighters less willing to stay. But with a new training building under construction and renovation of a station underway, Kerr hopes staff recruitment and retention will improve. It goes with their own sleeping quarters, uh, their own more private rooms, uh, chargers for the cell phones and iPads, uh, all that stuff has been taken into consideration. So. We're hoping that we attract, you know, that kind of uh, a, a more uh, a younger generation that still wants to do this job, but also fits their needs. After hiring four new EMT personnel in November, the department will be fully staffed at 120 full-time personnel for the first time in almost two years. When Kerr started working for the fire department in 1988, there were 82 full-time personnel. For most of 2023, his department was 21 people short. Kerr implemented mandatory overtime to compensate for the lack of staff and an increase in the number of calls. In 2023, the department received 5,961 calls. So far this year, the department has received 4,096 calls. It uh, brings morale down. People get tired of working. That gets pretty tough when uh, you've planned on your kid's birthday or you've planned on taking a family vacation or whatever it is and you've been told sorry. Um, it's your turn to work and you don't have a choice. A firefighter's work schedule usually consists of working a shift 24 hours straight and then taking 48 hours off. When working mandatory overtime, the same four to 10 firefighters on call could work up to six or seven extra shifts over the course of a year. It didn't affect our response times or what we put on scene. It just affected kind of what people don't see. Uh, as far as out on the street, when a fire truck showed up, it showed up with the same number of people in the same amount of time. It's just some of those people had been there longer than necessary. They've been there a couple days instead of just a day. The Bloomington Police Department has also struggled with retaining staff. They're 15 officers short of being fully staffed at 105 officers. I think it's fair to say that over the last four years we have certainly struggled. Um, it's been longer than that since I can remember us being fully staffed, but that's really when our struggles uh, have really taken place as far as losing more than we're bringing in. Like the fire department, the police department is losing officers after training them. They leave for agencies with more attractive benefits and salaries. Indiana University police officers recently received a salary increase of $7,000. A probationary officer is paid $70,325 yearly. The starting yearly salary for a probationary officer at BPD is $63,683. Because BPD is short on staff, officers have had to work thousands of hours in overtime, while also having to deal with a massive increase in calls received. I do not know why. I don't have an explanation for that. But this year is trending right along those same numbers, so we're having to do more with less. And that does result in uh, you know, added stress on the officers. City Council Member Hopi Stossberg spoke at the budget meetings about how police may choose where they want to work based on the culture and how they feel about the system. It may not be as important as the pay. Is that something that also needs to be looked at in terms of our culture of policing, in terms of our, our culture of Bloomington and how Bloomington responds to police and, and um, considers public safety as a whole? Pedigo assured that his department has a, quote, fantastic police culture. It has implemented extensive training on de-escalation techniques and are also clear about their expectations for how officers present themselves and interact with the community. We want our officers to police with a sense of caring and it's not, we don't want them just simply going from call to call and just trying to take care of an issue and move on to the next. We want them to help solve the problems that the community faces. Through the police social worker program, Pedigo wants to help officers decompress and avoid getting overwhelmed by the demanding work. Unfortunately, uh, 
officers see a lot of times what is someone's worst day on a repeated basis. So when police get called to a scene, it really could be the worst thing that that person has experienced in quite some time, maybe their entire life. So that repeated exposure is, um, that can take a toll on officers. Now that officers have new equipment and are permitted to take home their police cars, Pettico hopes they can respond to calls more quickly. The proposed raises um, in the 2025 budget, those have also already made their way out and I have uh, received, I'm in charge of our recruiting and hiring, and I've started to receive several inquiries uh, from individuals, both from other agencies and those that are not officers that are interested in applying. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Isabella Vesperini. With a potential increase in salary if the department's budget is approved, Pedago says he would like to see the agency fully staffed in the next two years.